Thanks, thanks for coming here. Thanks for, the, uh, for listening to us. It's, it's going to be about the cloud, and you're probably a bit sick uh, listening to panels about the cloud. It's probably in my long, too long history as a tech writer. It's the, one of the most hyped stories. But I hope it's going to be interesting. Um, and the first panel is actually, it's not going to be a panel. It's going to be a series of, of uh, talks or keynotes. And uh, the first speaker I probably don't need to introduce much is Mark Benioff, a salesman and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire. And uh, yeah, I met Mark, I think, um, when did we meet? 10 years ago. He had just started Salesforce.com. He was trying to sell me. Berkeley. Berkeley, yeah. He was trying to sell me on this, this, print, this idea of uh, software as a service. I was quite skeptical. But well, here we are. It's the biggest service, uh, software as a service service uh, there is. Um, yeah, without further ado, Mark, uh, stage you. is yours. Very good. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Very happy to be here with you in Munich. And I was uh, just uh, sitting here uh, uh, and kind of embarrassing. Someone came up to me and they said, well, what is this program all about here? Let it rise. And they got it confused with a medical panel on erectile dysfunction. I don't want to know. <laughs> but the point is, we're going to talk about cloud computing. And um, we uh, have an exciting program for you. What we're going to do over the next 30 minutes is, and we're going to try to inspire you, we're going to try to motivate you and get you excited. It's hard for Werner to get excited, but you're going to have to get excited, Werner. Is we want to take about 10 minutes and kind of lay the land on what is cloud computing, what is happening in cloud computing today. Uh, then we want to give you a demonstration. And then I thought I would show you how I use it myself. I have my kind of uh, tablet with me today, and so I thought I, the best thing is for me to actually show you what it is, how it works, and what, what it means for you. And that's what I hope to do. Uh, before I start, Salesforce.com is a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. So we um, are governed by this statement today, so it's up on the screen. And if you don't have a chance to uh, read it or if you're listening to us on the web today, uh, you can see it uh, uh, right online. Now, for, as uh, Ludwig has said, for the last 10 years, I've been harassing him from starting in a small uh, cafe in Berkeley, California, where he was stationed at the time. And the idea was very simple. We were going to be, exactly as Ludwig said, the catalyst, the evangelist, kind of the provocateurs of this new idea of cloud computing. I had been at Oracle for 13 years. I wanted to leave my job and, and start something new. And that was 12 years ago. And now here we are looking at a multi-billion dollar industry called the cloud. It's very, very exciting. Salesforce.com uh, is the fastest growing enterprise software company in the world. It's the number four Fortune Magazine fastest growing software company of 2010. And we've uh, given guidance that we'll do up to $2 billion this year in uh, revenue. So we're very excited about the prospects for the company. We have about 100,000 companies who use our products worldwide. 87,200 of those are paying companies, as you know, Margaret. And um, then we also run about 10,000 nonprofit NGOs for free. Part of our model is we don't charge charities and, and uh, alike for that. In fact, uh, we took 1% of our equity, 1% of our profit, and 1% of all of our people's time when we started the company, and we put it into a 501c3 public charity. Uh, that was a great decision. When we went public, it vested this huge foundation. We've given away over $20 million, $10 million to disaster relief. And also, we um, just gave $100 million to a new children's hospital in San Francisco. And as I mentioned, our employees also, thank you, our employees uh, also get four hours a month or six days a year paid for volunteerism. And the reason I put this slide in the deck today was we have a lot of entrepreneurs I know in the audience today, and I want to encourage you to do this model. Google's also doing this one 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 model, and it's a great model to integrate philanthropy and social responsibility into your business. Now, what is the cloud computing model? That's something that I talk about all over the world. Werner talks about all over the world. What is cloud computing? Well, to us, it's multi-tenancy. The idea is that it's multi-tenancy. Just like in this beautiful office building that was built, that's shared by many different companies, 
look, they didn't have to put in their own generator. They didn't have to put in their own water plant. They didn't have to put in their own sanitation. They're sharing the facilities in the area. And that's really multi-tenancy. It's a shared approach to services. Automatic upgrades, pay as you go, real time, and really five times faster of the traditional software hardware model where you're really running your own stack of code, you're running your own technology. That's a big breakthrough. And this level of sharing, this level of efficiency is just dramatically better. Uh, last year when I was at the uh, World Economic Forum, where I'm going to in a few days, I was with uh, Craig Mundy and we were talking about how many servers would actually have to exist if Salesforce did not exist. So for our 100,000 customers, how many servers would have to be purchased for them to run the apps, the databases, the application servers? And he said probably, you know, 100, 200,000 servers. But in our model, in a very unique thing, is that we only have about 1,500 Dell PCs running all of Salesforce's 100,000 customers. That's amazing. That's a level of efficiency that we just have not seen in our industry before. And that's from the sharing model. And that's, of course, 12 years of code really focused on efficiency. And I'll tell you, it also really pays off right here in the environment. Look at this slide. When you look at CO2 emissions or grams of carbon per transaction, every time you do a database transaction in your company, you don't really think about it, but you're creating a certain amount of carbon. In the traditional model of Oracle and SAP and PeopleSoft and Siebel, the traditional single tenant model, ladies and gentlemen, the power of that is a very actually high level of inefficiency, which creates a very high level of carbon. Google much better, Salesforce better still, with 0.09 CO2 uh, grams per transaction. Something that I like to point out to audiences like we have today who are socially responsible. Cloud computing, as Werner will tell you, as I will tell you, tends to be a big question mark in terms of what is cloud computing? How do we define cloud computing? And what we have to look at are things like, is there hardware and software being purchased? Because if it's about more hardware, it's not about cloud computing. Is it about automatic upgrades? Is it about automatic scalability? Is it about democracy? Is it about an integrated application marketplace? And, and is it about this energy efficiency and many other aspects of cloud computing? See, what I'm really suggesting is, and what you know, we've been talking about is we need a cloud computing test. Because the word cloud, because of the excitement around companies like Salesforce and many others in cloud computing, we need to define what is cloud computing and does it have these characteristics? Have we eliminated the hardware and software costs, the automatic upgrades, the scalability? Are we delivering a level of democracy to small and medium and large businesses? Are we delivering applications marketplaces like we see with the App Store and app exchanges? Because what I, what I can tell you from my trips around the world is many, many folks will use the word cloud. They'll go to Ludwig, oh, we got cloud too. Oh, Mark has cloud, we have cloud. But what I can tell you, and what I can tell you, Ludwig, is that it's time for you to be aware of the false cloud. Because the false cloud, Ludwig, is not efficient, it is not democratic, it is not economical, it is not environmental, it's just more software, and it's just more hardware, right? And that's really the key point. Beware of the false cloud. Look, what I love about my industry and why I wanted to come here today to talk to you, and the reason that I'm willing to leave my home in Hawaii to come here to the freezing, you know, freezing streets of Munich is because, for you, I will do it. But the reason that I come is because I love this industry and I love the change that makes possible by the industry. That in our industry, things are always getting lower cost and easier to use. It's a continuum. It's a continuum of capabilities. Lower cost and easier to use. We've seen it. We see things move forward. Isn't that right, Deepak? We see things move forward in our industry. You're wearing computers now, right? You've got the multiple computers on you all the time. Amazing. Well, we've seen it go from the mainframe to the mini computer to client server to the desktop. But now we are in the biggest, most exciting time in our industry ever. The level of innovation and capability in our industry is phenomenal. And when we were here at DLD last year, something amazing happened. The thing that happened that was phenomenal when we were here last year is social networking users passed email users. That was awesome. 
And that was a fundamental threshold in how we use computers, how we use the technology. And now how many, of us, how many people here are on Facebook? Raise your hands. Everybody. I don't even have to ask. How many people on Twitter? You know, it's funny. I do these presentations all over the world. Incrementally, it's happened. Now everyone's on social networks. Everyone's on this. But it's not just about social networks. It's about a broad change in how the Internet itself is being used. That is what is exciting. We've seen a lot of the old websites and the old internet drop away. And we've seen the new internet surge and go higher. Here's some of the recent Comscore rankings, for example. But it's not just, ladies and gentlemen, what we are doing on the internet. It's not just what we are doing on the internet. It is also how we are using the internet. Look at this. Desktops and notebooks. This is the end of Microsoft. This is why Microsoft has problems. This is the whole reason that Apple's market cap just passed Microsoft. Because the surge in tablets, the surge in smartphones, the surge in non-Microsoft devices, where computing was primarily dominated up until this point, as you can see, in like 2007, 2008, now we have a breakthrough. How many people here have with them in this conference an iPad? Raise your hands. Look around. It was not even available a year ago. How many of them have an iPhone with you? Raise your hands. How many of you have an Android device? How many of you have multiple kind of devices with you connected to the internet? Amazing. Isn't it amazing? And that is what is happening today. And we are moving now from cloud one to cloud two. It used to be like when I first talked to Ludwig, it was all about easy and fast and low cost. That is what we would talk about. If you read the original, things. He called me the jolly iconoclast. We'll talk about that later. Ludwig, thank you for that comment. It was about low cost and fast easy to use. It's not anymore. It's about mobile. It is about social. It's about open platforms, not proprietary platforms. Not more Microsoft.net, now called Azure, now called a cloud. No. That is not what it's about. Werner understands that. He's the only one here, but he knows what I'm saying because Fundamentally, when I went to Ludwig 10 years ago, I said, the reason I quit my job at Oracle is because I asked myself a simple question. Why isn't all enterprise software like Amazon.com? Because that is what things really look like, the retail application. But today, I say, why isn't all enterprise software like Facebook? Because this new social paradigm and its dominance in the mobility area this is what is really exciting to me today. And that's where I'm really taking some time to look at the transition from Amazon to Facebook, from tab-based interfaces to feed-based interfaces, from pulling information to pushing information at me. The system knows what I want. Clicking the system, I'm not using my mouse. I'm touching these computers. I'm using smartphones and tablets. My location is aware. I'm using Android, I'm using iOS, I'm using Ruby on Rails, I'm using Java, and I have an integrated marketplace to install my software. I'm not throwing disks into my computer like I was doing just a few years ago. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we have moved from cloud one to cloud two. We have moved from cloud one to cloud two, and it's been a huge, incredible leap. To make this clear, what I try to do is to say for the year, you know, here's why I need to do this, is because in our industry, we're always overestimating what happens in a year and underestimating what happens in a decade. That's the nature of our industry, overestimating what happens in a year and underestimating what's happened in a decade. I wanted to put George Bush over here on the left, <laughs> and I wanted to put President Obama over here on the right. My marketing department found it very offensive for the DLD audience, so it was canceled. So all I got was this guy, I don't even know who he is, and I got President Obama's right hand right here. That's it. That's all I have. But the point is simple. Look, we all have to change now. We have to all move forward. We have to get ready for this new world. This is the door that is open that we are now all walking through called Cloud2. The mobility and the social and the open platforms. And this is the power. And that's why for Salesforce.com, we've taken our whole platform and our whole architecture and rewritten it for Cloud2. Our sales cloud, our service cloud, our chatter collaboration cloud, which we're about to show you, our Jigsaw data cloud, our force.com platform, our new service, database.com, offering relational databases as a service to our customers, 
our Heroku capability, which is Ruby on Rails as a service, and Remedy for us, which we've built with BMC. We so strongly believe that this is what we have to do, that we've made these huge fundamental changes. But look, this chart's too complicated to go through today. We don't have the time. Let's see a quick demonstration. Monty, would you come up here and give us a show? Please welcome Monty. Thanks, Mike. All right. And based upon the login, you can see on the right-hand side, we have different applications available to us. That may be Salesforce.com applications or applications that our customers build or partners build on top of the Force.com platform. What you also see is we have the different functional areas yeah. being represented by those tabs. Right. Right. But I would like to really draw your attention to this mentioning of a profile. So we can jump right into a profile page. And what you see here is a page that looks very much like Facebook, doesn't it? So the beauty about Facebook is it has taught over 600 million people globally how to use Cloud2 applications in our private lives. But now it is here, in the heart of the enterprise. So it is an enterprise application taking the paradigm of Facebook and bringing it right into the enterprise. So it's a brand new model of how we connect and interact with, with people, with colleagues. And um, if we put a status update in here, we can reach out to a group of people that we can connect, we can learn from them, they can contribute to our business processes, and we can be more successful. For instance, if I look for a reference in a particular um, vertical, I don't need to wait at the coffee machine and, and for the incidental happening of running into someone who can help me. I just can draw on other people's knowledge. And you can see these people on the right hand side. These are my followers, very similar concept as in Facebook. Below that, you can see that Cloud2 is not only about connecting with people, what we have done here with our product called Chatter is connecting to everything in the organization. Every single data object can be followed. This is not only about people. This can be customer accounts, or cases, or files, invoices from third-party applications. So all these information coming together delivers to us a feed, a feed of information that is very much like on Facebook or on Twitter, but it is relevant to me. I can filter it down. It gives me all the relevant information that I need for my business process. But it is secure and private, because this is built for the enterprise. So you can see here, for instance, a price list. And people have been debating around that document and that update. So I stay up to date on this. You can see customer cases that come into my feed. Even an Oracle invoice coming here, seamlessly integrated with Salesforce Chatter. So if we filter this down further for, for particular information that I need in my current business process, I can go via hyperlink very intuitively to the underlying piece of data. So let's click on this one and go straight into one of the opportunities. You can see here the information that is relevant to us as part of that business process. But what I would like to draw your attention to is the notion of a chatter feed at the top. So if we expand this, you can see that a group of people are collaborating around this business object. There is a data object that gives people a collaboration space, again, private and secure, where they can share the agenda, they can share different documents, they can share their insight. And um, you all know we live in a mobile world. Mark had you hold up your hand and show what devices you have with you. And in a mobile world, you're not always at your stationary devices, and you can contribute to that uh, kind of information here. So let's go ahead and bring up the iPad. So you can see here the same feed being displayed on an iPad. And uh, obviously, we touch the screen because the paradigm is shifting from so clicking a mouse and clicking a, a, a keyboard to touching these devices. And if you orient this into landscape mode, you see that we have built this natively for the iPad. So on the left-hand side, you have real estate for things like filtering and favorites. And um, you can also obviously go into um, one of these, these opportunities that we were just talking about, and you can immediately post an update. So if we go into this and just do it here right away, just enter one of the comments that we could place like when we are at the airport or while we're traveling. And uh, obviously, it gets updated on the iPad. But if you flip back to the browser and we refresh the window, you can see that immediately it's available also in the browser. So it's about real time. There's no batch. There's no data synchronizing that takes place with any third party system in the, over the weekend. You have it instantly available. We live in a cloud to real time world. 
So it's important that everything that you have to contribute gets reflected in real time. And you see here, the comment talks about a group. Well, what are actually groups? Let's take a closer look at the groups, because this is a very important concept. Yeah. It's, it's really about yeah. bringing people together in a different way, empowering the business user to be able to do ad hoc groups, to work together and not wait for IT to set up a group for them. Would you wait for IT to set up a group in Facebook? Probably not. You have an event, you throw a birthday party, and you just want to invite your, 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 your friends and family. You just go and create a group. Why would you do it any way different in, 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 your, in your enterprise? So, you see here a, a number of groups like on competitive intelligence, on finance. Let's go into one of these. Let's go into competitive intelligence, a very important topic. And you see different members of the organization coming together. This is, I would call, a cultural revolution. You're no longer talking about the silos of geographies and hierarchies where people need to have a particular status to contribute informa information. If I can contribute something that my company benefits from, I can join that group and add value to the competitive intelligence gathering in that company. So, but we live in a mobile world, and most of the information that we gather is not at our desks. Sometimes it is, but, so, but most of the time we're traveling, we are in customer meetings, we are at competitors' conferences, maybe, and we just like to contribute while on the road. So let's bring up one other mobile device, which is the iPhone. So you can see the same product, Salesforce Chatter, natively built for the form factor and the screen resolution of the iPhone. And you can see the same groups also being available on yeah. the iPhone. So if we go into that group, you can see that we have with a smartphone, obviously, a lot more possibilities than we have with stationary devices. We have a GPS sensor with these devices. We have a camera built into these devices. So how many times are we strategizing, and at the end of the strategy meeting, we have those nice things on a, on a, on a, uh, on a flipboard? Over there, I saw there's a DLD flipboard where people can take notes and, and contribute. Like, this is, this is real-time collaboration, but pretty, pretty much uh, with, a, with, a, with a pencil. So that same notion of having a whiteboard collaboration happens all the time. What if you could just take a picture of that and contribute to, to our peers, share it with the organization? So let's do that right away. We take a picture of a whiteboard here and we upload it into the competitive group. So everyone on the team can see the results of the strategy meeting instantly. It's real time. There's, there's no batch report running to reflect this. So we post it here on the iPhone. Obviously, it's get updated on the iPhone. But if we go back to the, to the, to the browser window, you can see that that, uh, that same post that we just made from the iPhone is reflected in the competitive group. You can see that right here. So, we live in a mobile world. We live in a social world, and we live in a world of cloud computing. But it's not only about the Sorry. Apple devices and the browser. So let's bring up all the mobile devices. So the iPad, the iPhone, but also what's, what's core to our strategy is the BlackBerry. The BlackBerry and the Android. Salesforce Shadow will ship in a couple of weeks, natively built also for the Android. And this is really important to us. This is core to our strategy. This is a mobile world, this is a social world. The cloud too is a reality. And with that, I'd like to hand it back to Mark. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Moni. Thanks, Mark. And can we just show that, can we go back to that laptop screen for a second? And I just want to show, I know there's a lot of international companies here, and can we go back to this laptop screen? And so if you go to the laptop, the other screen, please, the other monitor on the laptop, demo two. So we can take this application, everything we're showing you is a live system, and just switch it into another language. Why don't we just send, convert this whole application to Chinese? So basically, we just go into edit, and we scroll down. This impromptu part of the demo, no problem, right? And then we just uh, <laughs> select one, Chinese language, my, yeah. And then hit save. And everything we just showed you will now be in Chinese, or German, or French, or Spanish, or Italian, or <laughs> Japanese, or Thai, or whatever your language is. And you can see that is the power of multi-tenancy, is the power of shared systems. Try on your laptop, you know? This is, this is the new world. OK, thank you very much. Great demo. One last thing before we end. I want to just show you something, which is this is my uh, iPad that I've been carrying around with me. And um, here I am. Uh, this is my actual system. I wanted to show you that this is how I run my business also. I've been living in Hawaii for the last month. And uh, this is all I use is this system. And you can see it's set up for me. This is my actual chatter of my company. You can see that Dan Darcy just took a photo of me here 
But also you can see I'm meeting with Fujitsu tomorrow, and here's all the information on that. I'm meeting with BMW at 6 o'clock tonight, and here's all my information for my BMW meeting. And also, for, here's my Davos World Economic Forum profile, everything I need for the World Economic Forum. And you can also see that in my specific areas that I'm working in, all the things that I'm working on, like I'm about to launch a new Chatter.com service in February, and in this Chatter.com service, you can see that Jeffrey Cortez at my headquarters office also just has been putting together some profiles. Here's a photograph of our server farm, et cetera. But now, if I want to come in here and I want to look at these slides or I want to look at this information, everything is available to me. Accessing my assistant, accessing uh, any, part of my, um, any, any part of my world. And this is the reality that we're in today. We're, we're in a new world. We're in a social world, a mobile world. And uh, I'm delighted to be invited. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ludwig.